Hello students, Michael Sanchez, violin teacher here. Hope you guys are having a good night. So today we're going to talk about violin tones. So if you guys have been struggling to sort of get a good sound on the violin, maybe your tone is sort of harsh or you get bow bounces or bow screeches, this is going to be a great lesson for you to watch. So the biggest thing is understanding that, you know, there's a lot of things that can sort of cause the violin to not sound as good. So I wrote down five sort of reasons why students might sort of struggle uh, to, to achieve a good tone. So the first one we're going to talk about is tension. So tension uh, relates to, you know, things, you know, that you're doing on the violin that sort of makes the bow not act the way it should. Um, lots of things can sort of cause that, so I'm going to go over that with you guys. Um, first one is just over grabbing the bow. So a lot of times with tension, students just over grab their you know, just grabbing this thing as hard as they can, causing the bow to not really have that breathing room. So, you know, basically what should be able to happen, if I was to grab your bow randomly, I should be able to circle the bow around very easily like this, if I was there right now. If I'm not able to do that, and you're sort of restricting me, then you have some tension going on that's causing your bow to bounce for you not to get as pure of a tone. So, uh, yeah, you could actually get a friend or somebody you know, to sort of just sort of see if it's very easy to do this. Just uh, have them grab your bow randomly as you're playing and see if that's something that um, is easy to do. So tension is very, very important to manage. Technically, also tension can be caused by too much arm movement as you're playing the violin. So if you're noticing, take a video of yourself. If you're doing a lot of this and not as much of this, then there's some tension up against the bow that can cause those bounces and bad sounds. So try very, very hard to limit that arm movement and more come out just a little bit and then extend and then bend the wrist coming back and then come in a little bit. Okay, so four parts of the bow stroke. Part one, part two, part three, part four. Obviously you don't do them like I'm doing them right now, but eventually it'll all come and flow together. So, so try to limit arm movement, that causes bow tension. The other thing that can cause bow tension is um, Things as far as the thumb, the pinky, sort of grabbing the bow or pushing up against the bow. A lot of times students hold the bow like this instead of holding it more like this. Okay, I want you guys to go ahead and try some. Take your hand and just sort of drop it down. Okay, do you notice how natural those fingers are when they drop down? That's exactly how they should be on the bow. Okay, I don't actually need to stiffen my fingers up when I'm holding the bow. But a lot of times, this is exactly how students hold the bow. See how far my fingers are from the stick and how they're not really hanging over and natural? So a lot of times, the way I can tell is how far is the pinky knuckle away from the stick? Am I more on top, closer to be on top, or am I far away? So if you're doing that, you're actually holding the bow more where you have some tension that's sort of security for you, holding up against the bow and causing you to get some of those bad sounds. So hopefully work on that. The next one I wrote down is wrist bends. So I sort of mentioned that a little bit, but wrist bend is extremely important because if you don't actually bend the wrist, it's gonna cause bow tension, but also just the inability to even create those nice bow transitions. Uh, the really good analogy that I like to give students is that playing the violin is a lot like managing a yo-yo. So when you have a yo-yo, you sort of have this wrist flow going. You know, you can't just throw the yo-yo down and expect it to come back up. Same idea with the bow. You can't just expect to throw it down and for it to come back uh, as far as efficiently and, and, and sound good. So try not to bow so much like a zigzag. Try to bow more like this flow, where as you're going down, you're sort of thinking about coming back. As you're coming up, you're sort of thinking more about coming back. So you're not just going down and falling off the cliff and up and falling off the cliff. So use more of those small muscles. Uh, keep the bow grip relaxed. And yeah, just be thinking about the transitions more. Um, so go ahead and watch as I'm coming up. Oh, this is the wrong way. Watch how my wrist does not bend. See how I'm not bending? Very, very important. Like that. So one way to practice this I want you guys to do is take a coin, put it on your wrist, start about neck high, and I want you guys to go ahead and just Keep the coin balanced on your wrist and go down to your belt. Make sure that you're going on a diagonal right now, a diagonal, and not an up and down that's cheating to do this. So I want you guys to go down to your belt, come back up to your neck, and keep the coin balanced. That's exactly what's happening with the wrist. So if you guys can practice that, that's a really good drill. Call that the quarter drill. OK, 
Okay, so that's what you guys should be doing. And um, yeah, just record a video of you guys playing and especially notice what you're doing as you're approaching the frog. That's where most students don't want to bend, they want to keep it stiff. Number three is index. Index is extremely important in bow management and getting a pure and clean sound. So if you guys have no concept of what the index finger is doing while you're playing, then you're probably struggling a little bit to do things like cross strings efficiently, um, do things like you know play off the string spiccato or even double stop, stuff like that. So one thing that I recommend you guys do is start off by having your index about this far over the stick and just sort of letting it hang over. And then understand that as you're bowing, you're sort of pressing down into the stick and you're pulling at the same time. And then when you get to the tip, then you're sort of pushing back this way, but still sort of pressing. So basically this is what the index is doing as you're bowing, sort of a conductor, okay? So there's, there's some pressure going down into the bow and there's some guide and some pull. This is exactly what's happening in the front of the hand. What's happening is you guys are doing this right now, I, I guarantee it, but you're doing it incorrectly. You're doing it with the arm. You're doing the same thing, but you're doing it with the big muscles. That causes bow bounce. That causes bow screeches. That causes, it makes it harder to do a big slur, a big crossover. So you have to do the same thing, but just understand it's being done here. So what I recommend for you guys that don't have any concept of this is to put your wrist up against the wall and make sure that nothing is moving here. This is a drill. Make sure that your bow hand is proper, you're not stiff, your thumb and pinky are curved. And then just sort of flick the bow like this. It's not gonna sound good. But right now I'm trying to get the kinks out. I'm trying to start to use, I'm trying to start getting used to using my index finger. Okay, so if, you, if you're doing it like this, you're probably doing it wrong because there's probably tension that you're, and you're sort of cheating you're sort of doing it more like this. So these need to be curved while doing this and you're practicing only relying on that index finger, which is challenging for people that have never done it. But technically that's gonna allow you guys to do things like You notice how much my index is moving? So like big slurs or big crossovers. So I could never do that if I didn't have anything working here. So you guys are doing it to where you're using the big muscles, so you're going ba da ba da ba, and you're not able to get that clean sound. Also, you're just working too hard. <laughs> so um, a lot of students just, yeah, they, they're trying to play and, and be relaxing, but you're, they're actually making it a lot harder on themselves. So. So try to work on that index. Number four is bow speed. So bow speed is a huge factor in how good of a tone we get. So I've noticed a lot of students when they play, they like to only use so much bow, like only a very little part. So they're, they're playing something similar to this. They sort of feel like using little bow is sort of a security thing. Like, you know, oh, if I just be very careful, I'm able to sort of you know, manage my way around the bow and insert, but actually it's the opposite. You're actually getting a worse sound because you're using very little bow. So you actually should be using a lot more as much as possible even um, whenever you're playing. So anytime that you're sort of first learning, I recommend using the whole bow for a quarter note. So you're starting off at about the frog area and you should try to get to the tip with every bow stroke. So you shouldn't play Mary Had a Little Lamb like this. You should play it. Sorry, what song am I playing? Twinkle, twinkle, little star. <laughs> so, and for those of you guys that are more advanced, same concept. Don't use this little bow. Use as much as you can, you know? So if I'm playing something like um, this. So because I'm using so little bow, I'm not spreading things out. I'm not able to get that sort of pure sound, that cleaner sound. So I should actually do that like this. So you can see that I was using the whole bow. 
All right, the next one uh, I want to talk about is just practice. So for those of you guys out there that are watching, first of all, you're doing a great job just watching and paying attention. That's a huge part of progressing on the violin is just uh, being a good student, listening to tips and advice. So just creating a good sound is a lot of just putting the time in because technically if I was to flip things around, which technically you guys might see me playing lefty right now because my the way my phone works, but if I actually was to flip around and try to play the violin the opposite way, I'm actually going to have to struggle because I don't have the muscle memory, you know, to be able to do it. I don't have those that hand-eye coordination. So even though I have the brain to be able to know what I'm supposed to do on this thing, my muscles are not trained yet because I flip things around. So you guys don't even want to hear how bad this is. So you can see. Um, muscle memory is also a huge part of it. So, uh, number five, just practicing, just sort of doing the things that we're talking about is important. So, just understanding it is only half the battle. <laughs> Good. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. I'm going to be uh, doing these every Monday and Wednesday at 7:30 Eastern time. Every single Monday and Wednesday, I'm going to try to stick to a consistent schedule, and uh, you guys can put it on your calendars and you can count on me uh, doing these. If you have any ideas for classes, I'm going to answer questions during some of them. I'm going to um, talk a lot about technique, um, but certainly I hope you guys uh, tune in and, uh, and count on me doing these. Uh, by the way, I wanted just a quick talk about our group lessons going on, so ViolinTutorPro.com. Uh, we have about 30 or 40 people that are getting involved in these group lessons, and it's been a lot of fun. We have about six teachers that are getting involved, that are posting classes. Uh, it's a whole lot of fun. So I uh, highly encourage you guys to check out ViolinTutorPro.com, uh, click on Group Lessons, and all you have to do is just sign up for a free introductory class where all us teachers are sort of hanging out, getting to know each other, um, and we'll sort of give you the vision of the classes, uh, get you familiar with the platform we're using, which is on Zoom. Uh, Zoom is exactly like Skype or exactly like Google Hangouts. Um, it's actually better because uh, we can have more people in the class. Uh, you don't have to be on video, you can just listen. Um, but we had a great discussion the other day. It was a teacher from France with like 10 other students, uh, mostly adult students, and just sort of um, got to know the teacher and we just had a great discussion. So once you guys actually try it, I think you'll really like it. It's fun. And uh, then from there, you can sort of sign up for these little satellite group classes that will have just maybe two or three students and then the teacher can interact with you, help you out um, specifically. So hope you guys decide to check it out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for um, you know just watching my lessons and uh, getting involved in Violin Tutor Pro. Uh, if you guys are interested in an instrument or a bow, we do have a sale going on right now at superiorviolins.com. Hope you guys check that out as well. So uh, if you have any questions about violin, email me at michael at superiorviolins.com. Hope you guys have a great night. And by the way, real quick, um, every day at 10, 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern, 8 o'clock Eastern, and 11.30 uh, p.m. Eastern. Uh, students are just logging into Zoom, just sort of hanging out. So I'm actually about to go in there. Um, so if you guys want to check that out, uh, email me at michael at superiorviolins.com for the meeting ID. I have emailed a lot of you guys about the, the meeting ID. So you guys probably know how to get in there, but I will be going in there right now and hanging out with you guys. So. Um, if you don't know how to get in, just email me and hopefully we'll see you there. Have a good night, guys.